I mean, rehearse, not rehearse. I'm um, summarizing what I said on Sunday. Holy Sabbath are cut off. Most of us are cut off, and most of the, uh, the church is cut off. Why? Because of our thinking. And another aspect, we want to submit to Christ. But if, if we're going to understand, we got to know what the roadblocks are. That's in, within our, our ability to process the things of God. Right? By now, it don't take but three years to know what your roadblocks. If you, if you get the fifth year, you long overdue. Find out what's wrong. Uh, that, we also said destiny demands a different mentality. The children of Israel could not get into the Canaan land. A new, uh, I almost said new Canaan land. The land of Canaan, the land of promise of the church. So they couldn't get into the promised land because they still kept looking at the garlics and the leeks and the cucumbers. And they were mad at the man that brought them out because they couldn't see the complete picture. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they couldn't see the complete picture is because they couldn't submit to him and his instructions. All right, moving on. Duality, that's where we want to go. Duality. 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 I mean, there's duality in the church. Mm -hmm. At Shannara, we got duality in the church. <laughs> Too much going on. As of the man of God, Timothy Keller, said, it's not enough to believe the gospel with your head. It must become operational in your heart. <laughs> I mean, you got a lot of knowledge in the church, don't we? Mm -hmm. Not a lot of application. We got to turn the tide. Mm -hmm. It's not enough just to get, to gather and glean. We need to somehow incorporate it into our very livelihood. It needs to affect our life. Because ultimately that's the goal of you being saved. You know Jesus didn't come to show us heaven. Amen. Yeah, who know that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, no? Oh, no, no, that's what he said. No. If you look at the word salvation, it ain't even heaven based. Sozo, the noun, soteria, is the label of what sozo means. Sozo is the verb. The application of soteria. Soteria is just talking about being saved. But on so many different levels. It bring, but ultimately it brings soundness. And preservation. Am I right? That's what the, so that's the activity of the spirit of restoration on the inside of us. That's the sozo. So we need to be sozoed on the inside of us. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he, he came so that he can take out the wedge between us and God. He brought heaven here. Yes. Is there a heaven? I did not say it wasn't. But he didn't preach about it. Go ahead. He preached the kingdom. Go ahead. And the kingdom is now. It's not at hand. Go ahead. It was at hand 2,000 years ago. A amen? amen? The kingdom ain't coming, it came. Mm -hmm. Jesus said the kingdom, he said the hour now is and what else? And it's coming. Which means in the error tense, it, you can't put it in a box. So Jesus started. He's the seed of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. He's the first fruit of the kingdom. And we are connected to him. Amen. Amen. So heaven came, heaven came when you got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. yes. That's heaven's best gift. <laughs> I just heard it. <laughs> it's the best gift of heaven. I mean, of course, seeing Jesus face to face is the totality of the gift. You know what I'm saying? But being changed into his image... While here on earth, because you trust in him to change something that's in you that's going to reflect him. Because that's, that's the goal. That's why you got saved. That's why you allowing Sozo to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You get what I'm saying? To be transformed. That's the goal. That's our heartbeat. Our heartbeat is saying, transform me, transform me, transform me, transform me, transform me. Amen. I don't want to have it in my head. I want to have it in my heart. I don't want to have it in my head. I don't want to have it in my heart. And, and that we got a system failure because we fail to change is because somewhere we are not remembering who we are in Christ. Yes, that's true. That's the system failure. Mm -hmm. When we got our affection on something else, our affection has to be transformed. And once we make up our mind that I'm going to be a candidate for transformation, duality ceases to operate. Once you make up your mind that you are a candidate for transformation, then at that moment, duality ceases to operate. It has no legal ground. That's why you got to have a single mind. As mm -hmm. so, soon as your mind becomes single, I was listening when the, uh, when the elders was talking and it was mentioning out of the book of Revelation, 
And I could hear, because they were talking about the seven spirits of God, and I could hear something I have never heard of what I could hear in my head one. There was one that sat on the throne. And I'm like, wow. And yeah, we've been invited to become a part of that one because we are the body of Christ, but I never looked at it as one. Which means single is singleness. And it kept resonating in my spirit. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but we gotta see that there's one on the throne. Not the devil, not the, my teaching, not you know what I'm saying, not my anointing. There's only room for one man. That's why we gotta strive lawfully. He's on the throne, he's high and lifted up. And I'm telling you, when you get to that point and you understand that his government is superior to whatever you are in, that is when all of a sudden. That what scripture said, death is swallowed up in victory. Go to Song of Solomon 5. It's not a sin problem. Duality is not a sin problem. <laughs> Jesus did Jesus done away with sin. When Jesus came, the Holy Spirit, he sent in order to enforce what the new covenant is, he sent the Holy Spirit. He's not only he's the interpreter, he's the enforcer. Mm -hmm. So that's why you need a relationship. The reason why we're still in duality because we haven't got a familiar with what the Holy Spirit is sent to do. If you get a, if God opened up your understanding and you find out what the Holy Spirit is not here to give you gifts. Go ahead. He's not here to make you feel good. Go ahead. He's here. Because he's been deputized from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, to finish the work he started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has. That's why he says he 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 um he what's it said in um James, he lusts for us. You ever heard it said the spirit lusts because he wants control. He wants to have a place on the inside of us. That's why when, when I, you know, it, it really, it rubs me, and I know it's a little bit of my sin consciousness when I, you know, get on Facebook and I see certain people putting things on there that they're not necessarily living, it's like, you know, they're like, okay, all right. Just like today I put in a group about, you know, us coming together and I get in there and find out them. two or three people they ain't even coming. That, that's duality. Why would you sign off on something that wasn't meant for you? See, those are the, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Come on, uh, these are the things that have to change if we're going to grow. Yeah. Amen. Those are little foxes. Mm -hmm. So what you know, you got to be held accountable for what you know. Yeah. If you're going to grow what you know, you need to be held accountable to your knowledge. If you're, gonna, if you're really going to grow, that's why folks don't grow. It ain't because they don't know. They, they, they won't be held accountable to the, to the knowledge that they know. Right. So it's information and not inspiration. Amen. Because if it's inspiration, it's going to change you. If God blow on it and God speaks to you, trust me, them doors shut. Quick. You can hear it in your head. Bam. Padlock on in there. You can't even get back in. <laughs> You're like, what happened? You can't even find a doorknob. <laughs> His breath will blow the doorknob off the hinges. He's trying to figure out what happened. You can't. You, you look back and find out, dang. And you can see the, his majesty in operation in your life. Mm -hmm. Even when you didn't have the power. Song of Solomon 5, verse 1. Everybody there? Say, so I'm, I'm come. Talk, this is Jesus. I come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I like when he's talking about my sister, my spouse, my dove. All of those speaks to different levels of relationship. When we came into the kingdom, we accepted Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior. We were his sister. His equal. Then as we grow in our faith, we become his spouse. You get what I'm saying? So then all of a sudden, you don't have all that, the luxuries that you used to have. The freedom you used to have. Anybody been there? Huh? You know, when you first got in, you didn't do bother anything. But now you have to find out from your husband. You have to learn from your husband. Your spouse. Yes. Oh, you, just, you still want to be sister, sister act, sister girl. <laughs> Freelance and whatnot. Okay. Uh, he said, I'm coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh at, with my spice. And you, these are all prophetic terms. I ain't going to spend time on it. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Oh, oh, eat, old friends. Drink, yea, drink abundantly. 
Oh, Am I on the right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm right. Oh, oh, yeah. Drink abundantly, oh, beloved. Next. Those are powerful things. I sleep, but my heart waits. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh. And you can hear him too. Anybody in that season, you can hear the voice of your beloved knocking. Anybody, you, you got, okay. He does not. He stands at the door and knocks. Right, right. He wants an encounter with us, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled for my head is filled with dew. My my wisdom is filled with anointed, my locks. With the drop of the night. In other words, there's an authority in what I had to offer in the drops of the night. I want to distill and drop something in your belly that you never had before. Next verse. He's, he's, I put off my coat. How should I put it on? He's knocking at the door. <laughs> what am I doing with the knock? <laughs> I put off my coat. And I, how should I put it on? This is how I read. Okay, so I'm just acting out. <laughs> See, I washed my feet. How should I defile them? I came out of the world. You want me to go back? That, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is what I wrote in my notes. For my head in verse 2. So for my head, my understanding is filled with anointing. My locks, my authority is the drops of the night. So the drops of the night is actually the dark places. It's actually Golgotha. That's what the drops of the night was. So it, I, he's given us the provision. To put off some stuff. But see, most of us think we're going to put on and put off. Put on and put off. I'm, I'm a certain way Sunday, but I'm going to do something Monday. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Everybody at the church know I'm saved and sanctified. But I put off. Right? It's confusion. Hot between two opinions. 